A uh, friend had to replace his clothes dryer and he saved the motor for me. And it is a one third horsepower motor, 120 volts, 60 hertz, 5.9 amperes, so it should be usable. It was attached to a larger wiring harness, but these are all the wires that go to the motor. And this is an induction motor with a centrifugal startup switch. When the motor gets up to speed, uh, centrifugal force pulls these weights outwards and that in turn pulls this disc back and that lets go of this little thing here which is on this part here which is actually also a switch now these two red wires I'm pretty sure are for turning on the heater because they're really thick ones so I've just hooked up my multimeter to those and right now that shows no connection but if the motor starts this switch would go this way and now it shows connected and if I let go of that once again, infinite ohms. So that tells me these red wires are just for turning the heater on and off, and they're really not needed just for running the motor. The next set of wires coming off of the motor is this green wire, and green typically means ground, so I've got my ohmmeter hooked up to that. And let's probe against the frame of the motor. And that shows again uh, connected. Uh, 0 0.2 ohms is what the meter shows if it's a dead short. That just leaves the white and the blue wires and the blue wire goes through this switch and then to the motor and that switch is here. So if the idler pulley used to have a spring on it, if the idler pulley no longer had the belt on it, it would hit that switch and shut everything off to protect against the main belt coming off or breaking. And that blue wire goes to another set of uh, connectors here which was probably some other safety switch. So I'm pretty sure that's one side of power and of course white has to be the other side. Now the way these cheap motors typically start is you have a main winding and then a start winding which is of much thinner wire to be of higher resistance, also fewer turns and that causes a bit of a phase shift and that gives the motor its initial rotation. That start winding is only turned on briefly at startup, if it stays turned on it will burn out within a minute. And on this motor we can see there is a thicker wire and a thinner wire coming to this block here and here they are connected together. Now I'm not going to trace everything here to figure out that it is indeed like this, I'll just do one more check. So connecting my ohmmeter between the white and the blue wires, it shows 1.8 ohms. That's DC resistance, not AC resistance. Now if the motor gets up to speed, the starter winding should get disconnected. So let's just push this in here, pretend it's running. And now we have 3.7 ohms and let go of that again. Back to 1.8 ohms. So that tells me when the motor is running, a switch disengages one of the windings. That's this thing here. So I'm pretty sure I've got this right now. So let's connect it to power. I got this power cord connected to the blue and the white wires. Let's plug her in. Whoa. And there it goes. It's got a blower on it. So that blows air. And the current on here says 4.35 amperes, which is pretty close to what this thing is rated at, so again, that's good. The blower on here was part of the clothes dryer. It doesn't blow super hard, clothes dryers don't need to. And this sort of blower might barely be suitable for maybe a dust collector for a belt sander. Now I have previously used a dryer motor for a blower for a dust collector, but I built a bigger blower for it and this is actually the dryer motor from an older dryer. Now what's nicer about this older dryer motor is it's got more of a square body which made it easier to mount and also the fan is strictly on the inside whereas here it's this thing here which uh, makes it very difficult to mount without hitting this fan. Now just to demonstrate the difference in power between those two blowers, this is the wind from the uh, blower that came out of the dryer. And this is the wind from the blower that I made. Now building a blower like that is a bit involved and I actually made a video about that when I built this one back in 2013. So I'll try to get this blower off because I have no use for it. First lock the shaft here with the vice grip. And then this needs to turn this way to loosen it. It says on here tighten this way so I'll try to turn it the opposite way. It's stuck on real good. 
This will probably break the rotor, but I just want it off at this point. Oh, look at that. Just bypass the switch here. Don't need these red wires anymore. So this is a nice screw thread on here, clockwise fortunately, and I'm just gonna put this back on here because maybe I wanna use this pulley. On the other side, unfortunately, this is a counterclockwise thread and the only nut that I can think of that'll fit on there is the one in here, so I definitely gotta keep this part because I might want to extract a nut out of it at some point to uh, use on this side. And I'll just keep this motor mounted on this metal frame because I think that'll be much easier to mount to something else. And what I'm gonna do with this motor? Well, I don't know yet because I just collect motors when I find them so that I have one when I need one.